Hey guys, Jonah coming in. Here comes part number two of the uh, series that I started a couple days ago. Uh, I'm trying to help some of the newer players or maybe even some of the veteran players kind of see some things that maybe they have not seen before or maybe things that they haven't come across. Uh, so, or some you know siege attacking tactics that may end up being a little bit more conducive towards your playstyle or maybe something you can add to your playstyle. So, say you pick a faction that does not have the ability to guerrilla deploy any towers or any equipment or anything like that, like Arverni or Niver uh, Nervii, so a couple of the factions that have Massilia, there are factions, RDI is another one. I could keep listing a couple more, but there are definitely a lot of factions that have guerrilla deploy units that can move your towers or tortoises up closer to the walls. Anyway, so you have, I picked an army here. It's a Bactrian army. It's not a very good, it probably could do well. It could probably do well. Uh, this is probably not something that I would pick, though, as far as with the pikemen. I'm not a big fan of pikemen, but we'll show a couple of things. This is not going to be a terribly long video. Uh, so I had been doing a stream a few days back, and uh, one of my teammates left his artillery just out in the open. He just completely left it out in the open, and there was no joke. I think the artillery piece for the defender was either there or there, one of those two places, and they just basically burned down all of his artillery before he had a chance to use it. So here is a recommendation for me, and I would guarantee that there would be other people that would back this up for sure. Anywhere from four to five towers, select them. Put them in a bit of a spaced position like this. This is one of the ways that you can use it. Put the, tower, put the artillery right behind the towers. Now, there are still ways. I'm not going to say that there aren't. There are still ways for those that are very skilled with wall artillery. They can sneak some shots. So, if that is the case, you can, you can, maybe grab another couple of towers. So you have your original five towers, maybe grab an extra one and make that line a block like this. Anything that you can do, hold on, that didn't do exactly what I wanted it to do. Let's see if it does it here. Nope, it's not doing it. Maybe we'll just put it back here. Okay. Sometimes it's a little finicky. You just got to find the, you got to find the place that it will work. It's frustrating. It can definitely be very frustrating. That's good enough. That's good enough. So we're going to put my ballista behind it. See, now they're better protected. This artillery piece here that would be on the wall could still maybe clip this one. That artillery piece that's on this wall, if there is one, could probably clip this one. Um, but it's basically you're just using the towers to block your artillery pieces for the defenders to have less of a chance of being able to burn them down. Another suggestion as far as giant ballistas or any artillery that you guys bring on attack, first thing you should absolutely do before you move it anywhere is turn off fire at will for sure, and that will allow me to actually move into your range units. Archers, Peltast, Slingers, ranged units, across the board ranged units. You want, to string, you want to string them out as far as you can, or you want to keep them as far back away from the line as possible. That is primarily for any wall artillery or any guerrilla deployment forces that the defenders may have that could easily charge out. Misesli is one that immediately comes to mind with their guerrilla deploy medium shock cavalry, the Numidian cavalry. They can just go right in and get into your archers. So if I had placed my archers here and all of these towers there, so let's just, I'm just going to line this up real fast as, as something just so you guys can kind of get your eyes on it. So all of my towers are up there in the front. I'm going to grab my three units of archers, which this is another thing that I like to do. Immediately put them into groups, turn off fire at will, and toggle guard. Put on guard mode for range units. Say so yeah, I have them here. Now, yeah, I might have some more of my infantry here. My general kind of like right there. He's a cavalry unit. And then say the rest of my infantry is here as well. They're kind of on that side. Misesali, gorilla deploying some cavalry right here, could easily get in here. And it's medium shot cav. It doesn't really cost. I think it's like 440. So it's not really that much for them to use or to lose. So you always want to make sure that your range units are protected some way, somehow. Another thing that I prefer to do, uh, there is, you can see right there, it says formation attack. Any unit that has formation attack, I tend to turn that off. And the reason is because if you leave them in formation attack, they will stay like this and fight the whole time. If you put them off of formation attack, when you go to charge, they will fill the gaps in the lines 
and fight against the enemy, not fill in the gaps as far as your line is concerned. That's what I'm, I'm not meaning that. I'm meaning as far as getting into the fight with the enemy units, they will fight everybody. Not They won't stay in a formation, hence formation attack. I will leave it up right there. You guys can see it. The Union will try to stay in formation while in melee or when in melee. You don't want to do that. You want to turn off formation attack. Now, there are some units that you can leave. So the range units, going to cover that real fast. Guard mode on. Fire, auto, uh, fire at will, auto fire, whatever you want to call it. Off. Absolutely off. Keep an eye on them. Protect them as much as possible. I'll probably make another bit of a video Probably a shorter video, but a video on as far as dealing with range units, keeping them safe, keeping them protected as much as possible. The artillery, we turned off fire at will. I mean, you can turn guard, guard, guard mode on. It doesn't really matter them very much, though, because they won't leave the artillery piece until you tell them to leave the artillery piece or if all of the artillery pieces are burned down. Um, I think that's about all I'm going to cover in this video. It's not too much to handle for you guys. should be pretty easy. Uh, if there are any questions about anything that I said, that's from brand new people or newer people or even veterans or even uh, what some would call the greats of Rome 2 Total War. If you guys have any questions or any comments, concerns, or anything, feel free to drop them down below. I'd love to get involved in some conversations. But that's where I'm going to leave it right there. So hopefully you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, Feel free, hit the like button, drop some comments, share the video, of course. Subscribe to the channel, as you will, guys will have other siege battles, field battles, land battles, campaigns, every a bunch of other Total War content. You can watch newer content that's coming out. And also, don't forget to hit the notification bell that will let you guys know when videos come out, when I put out community posts, and also when I go live on uh, YouTube. You can also follow me over on Twitch at just Joe on it over on Twitch. But that's going to be the end for me, guys. So thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe. And as always, until the next one.